What up, OGs? Welcome back to another episode of the OG Sessions Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Usher. Let's get it started. Yo, 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 what up, OGs? Welcome back to another episode of the OG Sessions Podcast. I am joined here by my brother, Joey Allen. What up? Episode number 59 going down right now. Give a quick round of applause for my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm happy to be here. I think it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time today. This is... This is one that we are super pumped about, oh, yeah. man. This is like... We've been talking about this one. Yeah, we were... We were uh, actually, we went out last night in... Um, and this is like the main topic of conversation, like just like, you know, this episode, what's going to go down? Like, it, you know, we've we've had so many different uh, clothing brand designers and, and just just designers in general, you know, uh, mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, like people who are just going down that lane on the show. Um, but this guy is a fucking legend with it, bro. Oh my and, gosh. And, I was looking at his work today, man. It's just it's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get right into it, man. Um, everybody, please welcome uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Carlos Foster. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate yes, sir. Lord, man. Appreciate the love. Yeah, bro. It's a fucking honor to have you on the show, man. Seriously, you're a legend. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. I'm How are you feeling? Man, I'm feeling good, man. You excited I'm for this episode? Good, man, really excited, man. Yeah, this it's been a it's really been a excited. um a little bit of a time in the making, man, trying to get this one set up and um and dude, I'm so happy you're here, bro. The things that you're doing are are next level. Man, I Seriously, appreciate it, man. A lot I, of hard work. I know you're um you're probably an inspiration for a lot of young designers in the city and a lot of clothing brands are trying to get off the ground and stuff like that. Um uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the brand. So, um, the name, uh, 89 Los Originals. Tell me about it, bro. Uh, uh, off the bat, man, I was born in 1989. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, bet. Yeah, so that's special to me. So, uh, and like I said, I love uh, ancient um, Egyptian history. You know what I'm saying? Anything ancient like that. So, if you look at the triangle, is it really a pyramid? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I still gave it that uh, vintage look, like you say, uh um, kind of like that old race car, yeah. old eighties kind of vintage feel with the zigzags and you know what I'm saying. With and that, the, you know? the the signature kind of like a font to it, yeah, where even it's with like the font, yeah, even yeah, going down. Pull to the that font. mic a little bit in front of you so that it's it's yeah, right yeah, there. even going down to there the font, go. yeah, man. You know my name Carlos, so Lowe's, everybody called me Lowe's. That's why I get the Lowe's from, man. And everything that I do is kind of based around originals, like with how I create my clothes. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's based around that. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like the essence of how I started everything, just trying to stay original to myself and what I like. And, you know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's really a part of me for real. I like it, bro. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it's uh, my art. Before, before we get into all this, um, uh, obviously, I, I've got so many questions I want to ask you about the brand, bro, and, and a lot of your processes and stuff like that. Um, but I want to learn about a little bit about you. Um, so, you know, you said you were born in 1989. Mm-hmm. Um, what was like life for you growing up? Were you born and raised in Jacks? Yeah, born and raised in Jacks. Born and raised, uh, Duval. yeah, Duval. Yeah, for sure. So, um, like early days, like from elementary school, like I grew up on the north side, then we ended up moving to the east side, um, moving on Union Street, Union and Florida Ave. Um, so it was like a whole nother world. Like once we moved on the east side, it was, it was just Union different. Street. That's close to the stadium, man. Yeah, man. Walking distance, man. Walking distance. Yeah, how far? Yeah. Man, literally, we used to watch the 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 jumble the jumble scrum the jumbotron. We could see the games from the street. Really? Yeah, man. We can go to the uh, go to the side and pull out our chairs and we'll watch the games. That's like crazy. That. Y'all yeah. doing cookouts out there? Was yeah. it a lot of people out there? Man, it's always a lot of people out there. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's a vibe, yeah, bro. Like real close, real close. Was it like yeah. a block party every game day? Uh, not every game day, but you know, if you go toward Florida Avenue, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That was always the spot. So mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I love it. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of watched uh, you kind of watched the Jaguars become a team like us yes, being a team. Man. You watched everything from since day one kind yes of thing. man since day one yeah yeah that's awesome are you a big jacks fan yourself big jazz fan yeah man. big jazz fan i can man. tell by a lot of your designs you do with the brand you're definitely definitely fucking with the jaguars yes man, man. even dedicate like the uh the bang on the collection that that's dedicated to the jaguars yeah you know bro I, I i really want to get into that um so uh the Bangham. This is a this is a design that you did. It's like kind of like a, a play on the old Jaguar logo. Yeah. Um. But instead of it saying Jacksonville Jaguars, it says the Bangham. And yeah. if anyone is listening to this isn't from Jacksonville, um, that's what they call Duval County. That's what they call Jacksonville. Is, yes, is yes. the Bangham. You know. Bangham, so. Yeah. Um. I don't know who started that, but you hear it in music all the time. You hear it from. Uh. It's just kind of like a common word that people say. Yes. In Jacksonville, it's just like, oh yeah, the Bangham. You know, that's that's yeah. just another term for the 904. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um. And and you doing a play play on that with some merch i think is just genius bro yes man appreciate it appreciate it what was some of the inspiration behind that that uh not just design but you know all those clothes you made in general 
um, like the inspiration, like I say, just um, watching the Jaguars growing up and um, kind of like um, hearing the Bangum. I heard it a lot, like like you saying, growing up in Jacksonville. So I just figured out a way to just throw it all together, like throw it in the mixing pot and put my creativity on it. And bam, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. End up coming to collection, man. So. That's how that's how it all came about. Man. Have you always been very creative? Like even as a child growing up? Or yeah. When when did this all start from you? Man, I'm gonna be honest with you, drawing, man. That was my first real passion, you know what I'm saying? Drawing. Um, so that's where a lot of my creativity came from. I used to draw a lot when I was a kid and I kinda shied away from it. Um, as I got older, then I came back to it. So, you know what I'm saying? Just kinda, you know, you trying to find your truth and you're trying to find yeah. your purpose in the world. So, man, I started from ground one. I was like, man, I kinda miss drawing, you know what I'm saying? So I got back into it and then Got back to fashion. I always loved clothes and sneakers, man. Just since I was a youngin. Since was, I was a youngin. Was this uh was nine eighty nine Los Originals, was this the first brand that you had ever created? I know some people it's like we start I mean, I've I've had like three different clothing brands throughout my life, you know, just kinda like ideas that never really got off the ground or just kinda like you'd maybe make a couple shirts and it never really happens or anything, but um you know, obviously, 89 Los Originals, that's you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Born in 89, Carlos, everything's original. You know what I'm saying? That's that's your fucking brand. Was this kind of like the first one that you had? It actually wasn't the first um, brand. Like, uh, I started out with it was Pride Apparel. No um, way. Yeah, okay. I had, yeah, I had a brand called Pride Apparel. But uh, like I say, it was kind of like the starting point. It's like a whole bunch of learning lessons. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I think I made like, man, probably like a... a a run of sweaters and a run of shirts, like in two colors, and that was it, man. Because I didn't have the resources that that I needed. You know what I'm saying? I started like, like looking around. I was like, man, this ain't what I really want to do. Like as far as the design wise, you know what I'm saying? It's like, man, I could put it on the shirt, but my vision was bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I can't create what I really want to create. So I didn't have the sources. So I kind of fell back on it. You know what I'm saying? Life started hitting. You know what I'm saying? Kids, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I'm like, man, you know what? Let me sit down on this for a little minute, and I kind of end up stopping then. Got it to a point in life, I got back on it, man. Then that's how 89 Lose came about, like like just getting back to myself, man. I was in a point in life where I was just trying to find myself again and getting back to Carlos, man, and start drawing again. Drew the logo up, man, and yeah. And, man, the rest is history, man. What, what, do you th- what do you think the biggest mistake in the first, like your first brand, what do you think the biggest mistake was? Um, not planning nothing, like, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of like, I'm going with the flow. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was like, man, I want to do clothes, but I really don't know how to do it. So I'm just do this for right now. Cause I see what's going on, but, and it's sold, but at the same time, it wasn't, it wasn't what I really was, was shooting for. for did you have it. too much stock at any point? Like, did you order a lot expecting to sell it all? No, I just, I, no, I actually sold, but it just didn't, it just wasn't me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I, I felt like, yeah, I felt like I was giving out something that, yeah, it wasn't how I wanted it. Like when people got it, they was happy. Like man, yeah. this is dope, man. Like this, I love but this, you man. Didn't but feel good about I knew it, it went, and I was like, man, I'm. Be- I can. I can do a little bit better than that, yeah. man. Like that ain't what I can really do for real. Like, yeah. Y'all like that, but I'm. I got some other stuff I can really do. Right. But well, what just, you're doing right now is crazy, bro. Man, I mean, thank you, like, man. Like I'm. I'm really impressed, and, and um, I feel like. You know, I've had so many. I've been down such a crazy road with my clothing brand and getting the. It, it, I ran into so many problems with it. You know what I'm saying? And um, one of those, one of the biggest issues that I ran into with it was, you know, the naming and and trademarking that name and doing so many different things like that. And with you choosing a name like that, it's so like uniquely you and like specifically you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like there's not going to be you're you're not going to have as many difficulties. You know. With people trying to come in and like take your name or, or 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 take your brand for themselves or something like that, you know what I'm saying? It's so unique and yes. um and you know uh, I, I want to give you your flowers, bro, because it's difficult nowadays to stand out and be unique. You yeah. know, with everybody trying to do do make a clothing brand or everyone's trying to be an entrepreneur, or everyone's just trying to be their own boss in general with anything. Um, it's it's difficult to stand out, bro, and it's it difficult is. to be different from the crowd, bro. And somehow you manage to just like. I mean, every single piece you've made, I've never seen like anything like. You know, what yeah, I mean, appreciate and then, that, man. And you did bring in a couple pieces for us to check out um, before yeah. we got started and stuff like that. And um, like everything down to the fucking zipper, bro. Yeah. I mean, you're just sitting there, your jaws on fucking floor because you're like, yeah. how this looks like it would be a like top tier designer brand. This looks like some shit you'd pay five hundred, six hundred dollars yeah. for. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. um, and and just with the logo to the designs, the material, the way it feels on you, it's like legendary, bro, for man, real. And I appreciate that, man, because so much hard work going to behind it. And it's like just the small things, like that's how much dedication that I put into like making a pair of shorts and stuff. I'm looking at the, like you said, um, if I can show up. Of course, bro. Yeah, pull, yeah, pull please, them out. Please, please <laughs> yeah. bring them out. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, this is some new stuff coming from the Bangum Collection, man. 
So Ooh, you know, like, yeah, show that to the camera. Let the camera to the see that. Strings, man. Like you know what I'm saying, like all this stuff count to me, man. From the tags to uh, the material, man. Yeah, like, the weight. Everything, man. All of this stuff. Let me let him see that yeah, logo. Hold it oh up my god, bro! That, that is so sweet. Yeah. It says the Bangham eighty nine logos. Yeah, that's so, that's the coolest freaking yeah. shorts I've ever seen. And with the corduroy too, like mm-hmm. not now. Right now, corduroy is like very very popular. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And um, I think the reason behind that is like it's so fucking comfortable to wear. You know what I'm saying? Is, like man. at the end of the day, yeah. like if you could wear some with corduroys as opposed to like denim or something, bro, it's like yeah. all day I'm choosing cor- corduroy. And, and, and it also give you that feel, man. Like yeah. the vintage feel. Like, mm-hmm. I, I love that feeling, man. You know what I'm saying? Because for some reason, man, they just don't make it like they used to make it. Hell no. Nah. So yeah, that play a big part in, you know what I'm saying, what how I design. You know what I'm saying? I want you to feel it too, man. I want you to feel comfortable, man. I want you to Get that feeling like, man. Your brand is, does look like it would be the number one brand in 1989. For sure. That is the most, sure. that is the funniest thing about it. I, holy shit, I'm just now realizing this. Like, yeah. 1989 is a name, but it's like your brand literally looks like it's from 1989. It like, is. the way that your designs are and shit, um, like what we were talking about with the, the NASCAR racing, like old, yeah. old, all over print designs with like, you know, Dale Earnhardt and all that shit, bro. It's it is, like, bro. those kind of designs are what, that's what I think about whenever I see your clothes, bro. Or like, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Daytona Turkey Run. No. Um, it's that car show down in um in in Daytona, but anyone that knows about the Daytona Turkey Run would look at your logo and immediately think of that Turkey Run logo. It's what? just like a very big like throwbacky logo, you know. It's, it's like like Beach Boys kind of um, yeah. kind of vibes to it, you know. what but I'm saying, I, but I get that. Um, like I say, I get a lot of inspiration from old TV shows, old music videos, like because that was my era. You know what I'm saying? So I love that era. That was like a golden era, the eighties, late eighties, early nineties, mid nineties. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like I get a lot of inspiration from that. Like I can just be watching TV and be like, man, that's dope. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I just put my spin on it. Like I put my creativity on what I see, and then that's how a lot of designs come about. So yeah, man. So it play a bit role. Like when you see something like that, do you just go straight to the paper and start drawing? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Like quick. Like you know what I'm saying? Like if an idea come and I gotta jot it down. Yeah, like, I gotta jot it down. I wanted to ask earlier when you said you started off drawing. Was there like a specific style of drawing you liked? Like, yeah, when I started drawing, man, I used to draw basketball players. Really? Yes, man. And shoes. That's I used to draw crazy. sneakers. I started drawing sneakers, man. Me and, and don't own. you have your own sneakers right now? Yes, man. Look at that. Yes, That's bro. crazy. Me and my uh, we, me and my own, one of my good friends, man, from uh, elementary school, man. We used to love sneakers, man. So we uh, we would um, draw them. And we would wear the same sneakers. Like we was always infatuated with sneakers, man. Mm-hmm. It really started out with sneakers first, and then clothes came. As I start growing up, you know what I'm saying? I start liking styles because my mom always kept us in like some dope stuff, man. Yeah, yeah like That's Yuga cool. Boy and all that kind of stuff. I like, like it. Yeah, yeah. So, so you got to kind of, uh, you kind of got to credit your mom a little bit. Yeah, to, Like man. you having this this kind of style as a youngin', you know? Yeah, she jumped it off. She I definitely like it. jumped it off. My mama definitely jumped it off. Shout out mama, bro, for yeah, real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, one thing about your clothes also is it's so damn comfortable. Like yeah. the shit you're making is like, I mean, obviously anything that is usually high quality and um, people actually put time into the materials and shit like that. Usually yeah. it ends up coming out like with that perfect fit. And dude, that's exactly how your shit is, man. Like, yeah. especially when you're looking at people rocking it, yes, man. um, like it looks so comfortable. How important is it to, to be comfortable when it comes to top tier, this man. fashion top shit? Tier, man, you can't even like, you can't, you can't say that you, that you look good, man, without being comfortable, man. So that's top tier. So I think about all of that. Cause that's how I feel. To be honest, like, man, it can look as good as it want, but if I don't feel right on me, man, if it ain't, that comfortable feel, man. I'm like, man, I ain't finna wear this for too long. You know what I'm saying? So that's everything. That's top tier, man. Yeah, top tier. Hundred percent, bro. Gotta I, be I agree with that. Man. And um, like I say, even like you say, down to the cotton, man. Down to the thickness, I, man. All of that play a part in my clothes. So, yeah. <laughs> I like it, bro. You've got a very, you've got a good eye for this shit, man. You yeah. you really know what you're looking for, and um, and you can tell that. Like what you were saying with going for that throwback look, mm-hmm. it's got a throwback feel. It's got weight to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Back in the day, if you go buy a varsity jacket, yeah. that bit kind of heavy. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It's dead like, heavy. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, you know, you, you got to get in a workout. You wear yeah. a bit weighted vest and Thanks. shit, but like that's how it was. That's the vibe. And, and nowadays, you go to buy a varsity jacket and that bit. I bet it's like it's got like air it's got like <laughs> breathing room and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like like airflow coming through and shit. You're yeah. like, what's going on, bro? And 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 I like that you're staying true to that vintage feel, yes, you know. Man. Um I get give you your flowers for that, bro, because nowadays it's so difficult to get back to just the way that people, the way that clothes used to be made, yes, bro, bro, and the way that people would put months, years, t- like time Dang. into making these pieces, bro. And it Thanks. was like all, Thanks. all quality tested and all this stuff. It's like people stepped away from that shit, bro. Now yeah. it's just 
how quickly can I get these clothes? How cheap can I get these clothes? Mm-hmm. How, how, how quick can I make a buck off of these couple shirts? It's like, nobody's thinking about actually putting out a good yes, quality man. product, bro. Thanks, man. And the thing is, is I don't, I don't always blame a lot of these people for some shit like that because it's expensive, mm-hmm. but it's also very difficult. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it is easier just to go and, and do the quick little print here and there. Like, you know, boom, boom, boom. The quickest way to do it on uh, any of these websites nowadays where you can just make something real quick and, and shit. But when you go the traditional route and you, you know, source materials, you find, you know, good designs, you draw shit, you start things from the ground up, bro. It's yeah. like, then you get the product that you got, bro. Yeah, and that go back to uh, just having a passion for what you do, to be honest. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't got a passion for it, like you said, man, you, are, you it's going to show. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, he's just doing that for money. Like, even if you pay 500 when you get the shirt, you're like, man, nah, something ain't, like, it's feel cheap, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to feel like you wasted your money for real. So, you yep. know what I'm saying? It's going to come back on you. So, you want people to get that feedback, you know what I'm saying? And be like, man, I'm glad I spent that much. Like, man, this is doing crazy. Like, how you saying? Like, man, the material, how it make me feel. And everything about this, these clothes, like, man, it's on point. You know what I'm Who saying? are some of your inspirations, like your designer inspirations, if you have uh, any? Um, Dapper Dan. Um, y'all been hearing about him since I was a kid, you man. You met him, didn't you? Yeah, man, yeah. Tell me about this, bro. Yeah, man. Um, man, I ended up getting cool with his son, man. Um, So me and his son ended up building a relationship, man, just off showing love, man. And I, and it just grew, you know what I'm saying? So I ended up um, actually going to Harlem. Um, And, and the story's so crazy, man, because uh, I go to Harlem and – uh. They they let me come to Harlem. Um, I meet his team, man. Um, we got a real good team, man. Shout out to Ashley too, man. His um his um, secretary. That's um, awesome. So bro. I end up yeah I end up meeting him and stuff like that. But I'm thinking I'm going. It's gonna be like a meetup and and we gone. So man, I end up um going to on um, Harlem. I was staying in Brooklyn. End up going to Harlem, man. So we in the truck. You no, know so I end up meeting up with uh with Ash. Get in the truck, man. I'm thinking we finna meet him now, you know what I'm saying? Because he had to speak. You know what I'm saying? He had to speak to some people. Um, Got you. Yeah, so, man, he ended up getting in the truck. I'm like, man, what we waiting on? He's like, man, he coming. <laughs> so I look to the right, man. He come, man, like, getting in the truck, man. And we meet, man. We going to Jersey. So, man, we just end up talking the whole ride, bro. That's like, man, crazy. Like, he just asked Were you me, starstruck a little bit? Man, like, who yeah. is Dapper Dan for these people that don't know? Man, that's like, man, the godfather, man, yeah. of, of the culture, man, of fashion. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Especially for us, man. You know what I'm saying? For uh, young black men. You know what I'm saying? Young mm-hmm. black women. You know what I'm saying? Like, he started that. You know what I'm saying? In Harlem. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like I said, it just grew. You know what I'm saying? He had something and it just grew. It started from the hood and ended up growing to celebrities, artists, all kinds of stuff, man. So, yeah. he kind of like the blueprint. So, that meant a lot to me. Like, his clothes, man, just... What was, awesome. a, what was a piece of advice that you took from Dabber Dan? You know, did he give you anything to, to kind of live by or anything like that? Uh, yeah. Um, one thing I remember, um, he said, man, uh, you got some people, they be like, man, uh, like you got people that's playing checkers, man. So, you know how people say, man, you playing checkers, but I'm playing chess. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then you got people that's playing chess and then you got somebody playing Monopoly. <laughs> oh. You know what I'm saying? You got people that's playing Monopoly. I like you know what that. I'm so that stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a good one, bro. Yes, I like bro. that a lot. It stuck with me, bro. Like that stuck with me. And yeah. and by I think like what he's trying to say, man, is just like it's just a different fuck. It's a way it's more advanced it's a game. Game, like, man. Chess yeah. is obviously chess. You know what I'm saying? It's legendary. But like I love chess. I play that shit all the time. But yeah. um, but you know, Monopoly's got so many different like areas to it. It's like it's an all around fucking yes, game, bro. Man. And I yeah. feel like that's that's a cool. I like that. Yeah, I like that's, that quote a lot, bro. Me. It stuck with me, man. And I bet that experience. You know, you just leave probably with so much motivation, just like man. walking away from it. Like I'm on the right path. Like yes, this is bro. possible. It's kind of like yeah. It's kind of like confirmation. That was real confirmation for me how it happened that whole experience man it was just confirmation like stars aligning yeah but you're on the right you like you're doing something yeah you know what i'm saying and god just moving man he just do everything man he just keep just showing me like man i got you yeah you know that's saying? a good feeling. yeah yeah you've um feeling. you've you've ran into all kinds of crazy people with this brand bro like yeah. you've uh you know i think one of your first pictures that i saw your or one of the the first pictures i saw of somebody wearing the brand was uh my favorite artist, Seti Hendrix. Yeah. So I've been listening to Seti since I was a kid. We had him on the podcast for episode 26. That was like a huge, huge moment for me. He's like one of the guys I've been, I mean, I watch all his shit, you know, and just, it's, it's like, I kind of felt that same way you felt when you met uh, uh, Dapper Dan, bro, where you're yeah, just like, yeah. you're just kind of starstruck in that moment. You're like, I can't believe I'm like actually sitting at the same table as you type shit, you know? Yeah. And, um, and just seeing him rocking your shit, I was like, that's the coolest co-sign ever. I was yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a legend. Tell me a little bit about that experience. Uh, first time meeting Seti, man, it was for, uh, for Papa. 
You know what I'm saying? That's family, man. Papa, uh, that's family. All of us grew up out of East. And, um, yeah. His family like my family. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Papa, too, man. Move that mic a little bit close to you. I yeah, just want to get shout that out, Shout out to Papa, man. He doing his thing, too, man. Um, but uh, he was cool with Seti. Uh, Seti was cool with my brother, also. You know what I'm saying? All them, was all, they already knew each other. So um, <laughs> my first time linking up with him, man, I go to the uh, the photo shoot. I had some clothes to get up to Gotti. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to bring stuff, you know what I'm saying, and get my clothes out. So um, um my brother introduced me to Seti. You know what I'm saying? That's so crazy. man, the first time he said it, man, we go in the house, uh, we go in the house where they shooting the video, man. Man, no lie, he just take off everything immediately. He see what I got, he like, oh, but it's just hard, bro. Yeah. Take off he took off everything immediately, right, man? Right change right right in front of me, put on the clothes, <laughs> man. Shout out the door, man. I said, boy, boy, that's a real one, though, boy. That's, that's real, crazy. man. He wore it the whole day, man. He wore my outfit the whole day, man. I said, but that's love, bro. That's love, that's love bro. bro. That's, that's amazing. Love. Like, he literally saw my outfit, bro, and took off what he had on immediately and put my outfit on and, <laughs> and went on about his day, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's Shout how out to City Hendrix, man. That Shout out to City, funny, man. Bro. Shout out to City, man. That Good is people awesome, for real. bro. That's Good the, people. And you, I can't say, I can't speak highly enough about him, bro. He is yeah. so, I mean... Just for when he came on the pod, it's episode 26. We're recording mm-hmm. episode 59 right now. It's just crazy because at that point, we were not even nearly half the size that we were at, that yeah. we're at right now, you know? And, and it's like he gave me such a, he, he believed in it from the fucking jump, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And he actually, it was like such a, such a just like motivating experience, bro, to walk away yeah. from like that interview with him and just be like, wow, like this yeah. shit is possible. Anything's fucking yes, possible, bro. bro. Special like, dude and special artist too, man. Like incredible artist, like he, bro. Like, like I said, yeah, he in the fashion, all kinds of stuff, man. So man, that's he just special. That's a special dude, there, man. That's and you know he's dude. got like you were saying he's into fashion. Like you know he's got a really good eye for, yes. for fashion and stuff like that. So the fact yes. that he jumped on yours so quick is probably just like that. That man, yes, bro. Like, yeah, man. It's a lot of signs, man. Like you keep going down the road, like man. God, it's crazy, like how he's getting crazier and crazier, man. Like yep. the experiences, man. So it's like, man, it's, it's dope, man. I just take it in, man. I so take how it in. how long have you been doing the brand, man? This brand here officially, officially, two years, man. Like, cause I I was already working on it before I actually put the first shirt out, and um, like I say, it really started because I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna do it, man. I wasn't gonna do it. Um, I had twenty four shirts, man. I started out with twenty four shirts, and they were just sitting in the box. Like I had the logo, they was done and everything. Cause I was like, yeah, cause I was debating. I thought about the first. The first um incident, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. man, dang, this gonna work again. So uh man, it, it's so crazy. Uh, I get on the phone with one of my homeboys. Um, so he in the car with another one of my homeboys. So uh man, we talking on FaceTime, they like, hey, man, what's in that box? You know what I'm saying? They're like, Man, I know I, I think you gonna do something, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know you like clothes and stuff, like, man, what's in the box? So I was like, man, some shirts, but I ain't dropped them yet. So he like, Man, let me see the shirts, man. So uh I show him the shirt. Man, he like, bro, I need one of them shirts, man. So uh he brought the first shirt, man, for a hundred dollars, man. Wow, no lie, man. He brought the first shirt for a hundred dollars. That's when I knew, man. That's a homeboy. Cause they, I, I wasn't finna drop him yet. I like, man, I ain't even drop. He's like, man, I'm going to New Orleans, man. I need that shirt. He's wow. like, man. He like, man, I pay you a hundred dollars for it. And and after that, eighty nine low. That was the first sale. That was the first real sale. Wow. Bro. And then you dropped real. it right after that. I dropped it right after that, man. I was ready. Like that was my confirmation. Like, yeah. man. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What was what was the design for your first shirt? It was just a logo you said? Uh yeah, it was the logo with the uh the Chanel patch, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the big yeah. Chanel patch, cream color, uh like that na- it was uh not navy, uh, but like the forest green and red, man. It was yeah. a dope, dope shirt, man. Real dope shirt. Yeah, man. You crushed yeah. it, bro. Yeah, man. Brought it for a hundred dollars and the rest is like, oh yeah, it's on. Yeah. It's on. And ever since then, man, I just started getting back in the lab and just start going with it, man. People loved it. Dude, oh, you're, yeah, you're crushing. Another it, guy I saw wearing your clothes is my favorite artist, Lil Duval. Ah. Yes, man. Yes, man. Yes. Um, Dude, he's, he's a legend. How too. did that happen, and man? Another story. Uh, shout out to Nod Ross, man. Uh, the comedian. Um, he uh, he with Lil Duval. So man, real down to earth dude, funny dude, man. Um, he supported my brand, so I gave him a hat. Uh, so he got a hat, man. They were coming out the <laughs> coming out the jet, man. On uh, him and Lil Duval, he said. Man, so when Lil Duval saw the hat, he took his hat. Took the hat. And it was like, yeah, this mine now. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's like, man, damn, bro, that's my hat. He's like, man, you got to get the dude who made it to get, to get another one, man. So that's how Lil Duval ended up taking pictures with the hat, man. Did he ever find out that it was your hat? Oh, um, I don't know. I don't know. You reach, did you reach out? Uh, I, I don't try to reach out. Yeah, yeah the, the, dude, out. the pictures yeah, are dope. Yeah, bro, the pictures dope. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, man. You know, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm just happy he got it on, man. Yeah. I'm like, man, that's dope, man. But I got a feeling we're gonna, we gonna end up linking up, man. Little yeah. Duval, if you see this, you're my favorite <laughs> artist. 
That's, that's a nice hat. Yep. <laughs> hey, we need to get Lil Duval on the pod next, bro. bro. Hey. And if he comes on, man, we're going to remind him about this moment. Hey, for sure, like, man. Remember that hat you had? Hey. We're going we to link you guys up, bro. Yeah, we're going to do a full Lil Duval Los Originals collab. For sure. And he ain't just wear it, man. He wore it like the whole week, man. I'm on the Jaguar page and all. I see him wearing it. He's still wearing the hat and everything, man. I was like, man, that's love, man. That's good. That's love, Shout man. out Lil Duval, man. He's a legend. That's He's love. He, he is. He's, He's good really, for the city. Yeah, I was going to say, he he, is, like man. having the name Lil Duval, bro, it, like he, he really puts on for the city, and he. There's not a lot of people that actually like that still rep their city that hard. You know, like some of these rappers, you don't even know where the fuck they come from. Sometimes, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're and, like, and he put on from the start. Like, like he put on for Jacksonville from the start. Do oh, all yeah. from the start. He used to like, perform in um, Jaguars jerseys. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's like when he early days, bro. Yeah, he was man. wearing just like straight vintage Jaguars jerseys. Yeah. Well, back in the day, they weren't vintage, but yeah. um, I, st- I remember the first uh, the first time he's uh, seeing Lil Duval, man, um, on Dev Comedy Jam, like um. Uh, was it what, what was it on BET? I know exactly. What you're um, talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what was it um, on Comedy View? Late night on Comedy View, something like that. But uh, I remember sitting with my granddaddy, and uh, we sitting down, and I never get. Everybody like, man, he from Jacksonville, you know what I'm saying? But I never get. Man, he made the whole crowd stand up, man. But me and my brother was laughing crazy. I'm like, boy, yeah, he's a legend. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is, man. Love Lil Duval, man. Big legend. And his, Big legend his songs us. are so fucking funny, dude. They're like, hilarious. Man, the fact Smile, that, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dropping, dropping dick off. <laughs> I'm dropping dick off. It's, and it's like it's so funny because these songs, well, there'll be like like a top top one hundred yeah. on fucking on Apple Music. Yeah, and you're like, always what? random. Everything fuck. everything yeah. touch, man. It's like yeah. everything touch, but it's so natural to him. Like yeah. you know, what I'm saying yeah. it's like he ain't trying to make a hit. Like he just really being himself, dude. It's so cool with the two because like uh, sometimes you see like in the Jags games, a lot of these celebs come out and shit, bro. And it's like I feel like the Jaguars, like the celebs that come out for the Jags, and, like the people, the celebs that came out of like the Jacksonville community are yeah. just like the coolest fucking people. Like is, you got man. Nardo, you got Seti, you got Lil Duval, you got like Lil Papa, like yeah. so many of these people, bro. Where it's like they're from Jags, is, bro. they're all great performers, they're all great, they make great music. music you know what I'm saying? Is, bro. They, they show out for the city. You know what it I'm is, saying? Bro. Like they're always showing love. It's just a cool. I, I love yeah. being from Duval. We own man, bro. we own man. Yeah. They got a little Duval man. Yeah. Got a little Duval, man. It, 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 you stand about, out, bro. Something about that Southern flair we got, yes, baby. I don't know what it is, but we stand out, bro. We really do, and there ain't nobody like like people from Jacksonville, man. I'm gonna say it right now, top county in Florida. Man, you gotta know. Oh that, yeah, man. there's a reason. There's a reason we the biggest county in America, though. And we can spot each other out too, man. I was in Carolina, man. Um, and I was at a Hornets game. Man, every every everybody I spotted out, they was from Jacksonville, man. No just way. from how they was acting and yep. stuff. I was like, man, y'all gotta be from Jacksonville. They like, yeah, we from Jacksonville. I'm like, that is crazy, man. <laughs> out there wild. Yeah. What? Just out there's just another energy, man. It's yeah. another it's another energy with us, man. Hundred so, percent, bro. So um, you know, one thing that I wanted to talk to you about before we get into the sneaker talk, bro, because this is like I know yeah. it's gonna take probably thirty minutes <laughs> talking about this shit. Um uh, you know, you mentioned earlier uh just talking about like creating your own lane and things like that and mm-hmm. um you know, I think that that's just, just something that I've always kind of seen as well. Is like I just always want to create my own lane and just kind of like you know be my own, mm-hmm. not boss in a sense, but like just kind of um, you know create what I want to create freely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so uh, tell me a little bit about creating your own lane. How um, you've done that, man. The first thing with uh, like creating your own lane was like how I started, man, with just being true to myself, man, being true to what I love, and you know what I'm saying the things that that I want. You know what I'm saying? My, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like my goals. You know what I'm saying? So I, I tap into that. You know what I'm saying? That's just about, that's how you start your own lane. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just find yourself, man. Be yourself, man. Cause that's your gift for real. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people see other stuff and want to see, want to do what they do. I'm like, man, just be yourself, man. That's your gift. That's mm-hmm. what's going to make you stand out. Whether they like it or not, man, they're going to respect it. You know what I'm saying? They're going to respect that. Cause they know it's you. You know what I'm saying? That on there, that's you. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you create. So, with just starting your own lane, man, just make sure you stay true to yourself, man. Yeah. Stay true to yourself, man. I love that, bro. And yeah. you, you're the, uh, it's so cool hearing that from a guy like you, man, because yeah. you're a fucking legend with this shit. And like, and you are, you are staying true to yourself. I yeah, mean, you me. are, the brand is you. So, yeah. you know, I love it, bro. And you rep it well. Um, sneaker top. For sure. If you guys don't know, um, Carlos Foster has created his own sneakers. This dude literally has his own shoes, bro. <laughs> um, you're rocking them right now. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind these, bro. What's the name of them before we get started? Oh, man. They, uh, they're 89,000. The Los original 89,000. I love it, bro. Los 89,000, man. I like it. So tell yeah. me tell me about the shoe. Where'd the inspiration come from? Um, the inspiration came from the Air, the Air Force 3, man. The Air Force 3 Nike shoe, man. The silhouette. You know what I'm saying? I kind of broke it down. To where, because it was a basketball shoe, you know what I'm saying? So I broke it down to where I wanted to make it like a lifestyle and put my touch on it, basically. Um, 
And that's how it came about, you know what I'm saying? And just um, coming up with the name and just putting certain things in order and taking off. Like, I changed the bottom. I took off a lot of stuff and just made it like a lifestyle shoe, to be honest. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to be like, man, you can rock this however, man, and you can be dead clean, you know what I'm saying? But it's still going to give you that 89, you know what I'm saying, that look. It's still going to give you that vintage look, high top, you know what I'm saying? It's hitting your ankle, you know what I'm saying, from the uh, suede on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's lifestyle materials, you know what I'm saying? Something you can wear. You know I love saying? it, It'll bro. Clean, yeah. Not a lot of people are going with the high style or the high top style no more, bro. Man, like, yeah. I, I love that you're bringing that back. And um, just certain certain aspects of the shoe that I'm a big fan of, uh, how you got, like, all the holes at the top where the laces could go into. It's, like, yeah. the multiple holes. I don't know what that's called, but I just – that's one thing that I've always loved about, like, like Jordans, like, back in the yeah. day, bro, when Jordan first started doing that. And um, certain shoes, it's, like, that's – for me, that's, like, a fucking staple piece. You know it is, I mean? bro. It's little things. You know? Little and when, things, And when you're talking bro. to sneakerheads, when you're talking to people that actually fucking love shoes, bro – that's the type of shit that they think about. Yes. Like they, it's the little things about it that will yes. make them either love a shoe or hate a shoe. Yes, you know? Man. And um and and tell me about some of the challenges that you face with creating these sneakers, bro. Oh man, like uh getting the right material, um, certain designs, like getting the right designs and what to put on, like just colorways too, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause you gotta you can't you know what I'm saying, just come out with bright colors. You gotta make sure that the color's neutral. It's, it gotta be a feel, it gotta be your feel, you know what I'm saying? And at the same time, the people gotta love it too. So, but it's difficult just trying to go through a manufacturer that can make that. You know what I'm saying? To make what you that you what you really want on the shoe, and it take time, man. It take time, like you say, from the the eyelids of the shoes, man. From the tongue, the everything, man. It take time. The soul, everything, man. And like you say, it's and it challenged me so much to the point where like I'm at a point now where like my next challenge is creating a shoe from scratch, bro. Like like that's the wow. process I'm in right now. Like I'm trying to create a shoe from scratch, bro. What what we're kind of like when you say create a shoe from scratch. So this one you created right now, it's kind of like based off of a couple of shoes, like you said, how it's like the yeah, the like uh, kind of like a Nike Dunk sole bottom. You know what I'm saying? But the curves are different. Like how I uh, did the sole, the curves are different. Um, uh, the Air Force Three, I kind of broke it down. Um, I broke it down, like took certain silhouettes off, um, and changed the back a, a little bit, like just breaking it down, man. So I kind of like, like broke down the shoe for real. And, I like and it. Put my own flavor on it. You know so did saying? you deconstruct the actual shoe yourself and then kind of yeah, like, I got it? the shoe. Yeah. Wow, yeah man. Bro. That shoe hard to find, man. Like that shoe was hard to find right now. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Did yeah. you ever like, I'm sure this is such a long process. Was there ever it like is. a point where you're like, oh, maybe I should switch and go to a low top or like maybe like did this ever happen for you? Where yes, you man. Go yes, back man. It's like home? a uh, like a two and a half, three year process, bro. Wow. Yes, bro. Like the Holy shoes. Shit. Yes. Yes, bro. I think you might be the first person out of Duval to drop a sneaker. Yeah. Um, I think we got William Boston. William, it's a dude named oh, William Boston. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shout out William Boston. I know yeah, about him. William Boston. Um, he has something. But I think um, with what I'm doing, just going through the certain like the stints that I'm going through with, with my shoe is going is going to be different, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm going like. Like from the Haynes hats to everything, like man, it's gonna be dope, man. Like it's and your real. branding, dude. Like nobody yeah. in the city's really got your branding with yeah. the shoe as well. Like you're you're really all about all around brand. Yeah. And I think that that's something that most brands lack nowadays. Is you know they might be incredible in one aspect, but then you go and look at like their marketing or you look at like um just anything customer service quality mm-hmm. whatever, and it it's just lacking. But yeah. with your stuff, it's like I've, it's hard for me to find a flaw to yeah, be honest, man. and um and that comes with time yes, consistency bro. just getting better and you doing all those things bro so kudos to you man i appreciate that man i really do man i really appreciate that because a lot of hard work going to it man like you gotta uh um like you say it's all about balance because you got you know, i still go through real life stuff man you know what i'm saying family life you know what i'm saying work i still work a nine to five wow well, you know yeah. people don't even know that some people think i do this all like they like man i'm like man, i still work bro I yeah, still it's a nine hustle. To five. yeah so yeah it started as a you know what i'm saying it's a hustle you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying it started as a hobby you know what I'm saying? And just I just grew it into a business. I turned it into a business. But you know what I'm saying? I still go through regular stuff. So you know what I'm saying? So it's bro, hard, bro. We got bills to pay. And yeah. this, people, this will, like yeah. one thing I made a big mistake. A lot of my listeners already know about all this, but I um I'll keep it short, but like I I basically took a year I left my job. I had a great nine to five job and I just decided to just put all my eggs in one basket with the pod and just make all my money from this and then just pay bills with the pod, do all that mm-hmm. stuff. But bro, like you it gets to a point where I don't want to keep using my money from the podcast that I've worked yeah. so hard to get. I don't want to spend that on the 
on, on rent or on anything like that. I want to spend that shit on the pod again. I yeah, want to evolve yeah. the pod. You know thanks, what I'm saying? Like, thanks. I'm not trying to just stay at this one spot forever, you yeah. know? And, and um, I probably would have had a, a, a video podcast studio a lot sooner if I had just stayed with my 9-to-5 job and kept making some money. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you know, my listeners know I'm back in a 9-to-5 job making better money than I was before, but mm-hmm. it's put me in such a better situation, bro, to where, like, I can now invest as much money in the pod as I want, get better guests yes, on the pod bro. like yourself, like, do crazy things that, like, at one point I wasn't able to do, you yeah, know? Yeah. And so um, I, I applaud you for still having your job, bro. Like, yeah. I think some people look at that as a, a you know, like a, a fault or something, or they look at mm. it as, like, a bad thing or whatever. It's it's not, bro. It's yeah, actually, it's it shows that you're just that much more committed because yeah, most people will go to a 9-to-5 job and then sleep all day afterwards because they're so damn tired. Yeah, it's another job, bro. Exactly, it's literally bro. another job. A, bro. And to be honest, it's another full-time job. Bro. More. I was about to say, it's an yes. overtime yes, job, Yes, bro. bro. It's literally. a whole other job, bro. And, like, um... Like, like just doing my business, man. I never took out a business loan. You know what I'm saying? I never did. Now, all of this is just hustle. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, I work, bro. You know what I'm saying? So all of that play a part in, you know what I'm saying, where I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, I'm just glad that people like it. You know what I'm saying? Because making clothes, man, people can, man, it's not guaranteed, bro. It. Yeah, I'm glad people love it. But people, designers know fashion. When you starting out, man, it's not guaranteed, bro. For sure. You know what I'm saying? We still in the early stages. You know what I'm saying? So you still got to see like another three years, you know what I'm saying, to see how, how, Really dedicated you are. You know what I'm saying? How important is consistency in this game, bro? Oh, man. Like, you can't go off for too long, bro. Like, you know, I think we was having this talk, you know what I'm saying? Like, a year off is a long, you know what I'm saying? That's a long time. But it's all about marketing, too, man. Just people just got to see you, man. They got to yeah. see it. They got to see it, man. So that play a big part in it. You know what What's man? the biggest piece of advice you would give to maybe the younger version of you that uh, was just starting off Los Originals? Oh, man. That's a good question, man. The younger version. Um, believe in yourself, man. Cause that's that's the push. Yeah, that's the push, bro. If you don't believe in yourself, man, or believe in what you're doing, man, I would have been done. You know, I would have been with pride. I would have just left it though. To be honest, you know what I'm saying? But I saw something that was like, yeah, man, I can do it. I can do it, man. I can do it. This is what I like to do. And guess what? You got to be. You got to be so dedicated to the point where, man, man, if it don't go, man, like it's all a test. You know what I'm saying? Because what if it don't go? You gonna stop? Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But if you got a passion for something, man, you not just you not finna stop. Yeah, you don't care if the money coming in or not, man. You just you gonna keep going. Hundred percent, bro. You gonna keep doing it just because you like to do it, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just because you like to do it, so all of that is gonna it's gonna test you. You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta have a passion for what you do. You know what I'm saying? But my, the, if I was talking to my younger self, man, I wish I would have did it earlier, man. To be honest, really, I wish I would have did it earlier, man. Like like in high school. How old are you right now? If you don't man, mind me asking, I'm 34, man. Okay, word. Yeah, man. I wish I would have did this. Like like to be honest, I wish I would have did it out of high school, bro. Like you wow. know what I'm saying. I wish I would have did it out of high school. Did bro. you have the thought? Like, did you did you know this is kind of what you wanted to do? Yes, bro. Because I used to, I used to, I was always infatuated with clothes, man. I love fashion, bro. I always love fashion, bro, and sneakers and sneakers, bro. I was always, I, I've been collecting sneakers since like ninth grade, bro. Like, well, it's never too late, man. You going bro, now and it's, it's it's going up, man. I, I'll it's crazy right to now, see how stuff feels now. Like even with sneakers, man. Like I was doing that in high school. Like when people was hoarding, like I see it now. Like people were holding shoes and stuff. Like man, I was doing that in high school, bro. Like I was getting sneakers and holding on to them, and no man, I was already doing that. Like before That's social crazy. media and all that, man. Like I, I always had a passion for stuff like that, man. You know what I'm saying? I always had a passion. Like I get a shoe, even if I couldn't buy it, bro. Like I, if I held a shoe in my hand, I look at every aspect of the shoe, bro. Like really infatuated with it, bro. Like trying to see the material, trying to see everything about this sneaker. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, man, you just gotta have a passion for this stuff, man. But it go back, bro. It go back. So what was your favorite part about? I'm sorry, did I, no, no, no. Um, but what was your favorite part about? Uh, um, like when you were a sneakerhead, like you know, there's certain there's certain aspect of shoes that you like, you know, in particular, like personal favorites. What were some of yours? Um, Ooh, were you man. one of those? Like, did you only wear high tops for a while, or you know, did you were you kind of like? I know for me personally, bro, like when Off White did the the Nike collab, um, I was so infatuated with just like when they do like the oversized logo, yeah, or they would just like make it, or they do like a logo on top of a logo, and then yeah. like like the Nike logo be like overlapping itself, and it was like certain things like that. You just it's like un untraditional. It's like yes, if someone did that back in the day, it'd be like a crime. You know, yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? bit fake, bit it's, fake. And so bit. now it's I love when people kind of push the limits like that. For me personally, what are some of your personal favorites? Man, my personal favorites like because you got to think we uh like we weren't born in the '80s and stuff like that, but we knew. You know, what I'm saying I knew about the original Jordans. Like I used to look at the '84, '85 Jordans ones and stuff like that. So like when we was in high school, I'm in high school around like '03. 
oh three oh four five. So you know, what I'm saying I'm looking at the shoes dropping now, but the, I used to like like the original details of the shoes because you know we came up in the retro era. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like when the retro started really booming. You know what I'm saying? So man, I used to look at the retro like man, I hope they make it like the original. So if we actually got a Jordan shoe that looked like the original shoe, I'm like, oh, but it's like that was my thing. Like man, yes, man, they didn't do nothing extra. They ain't put nothing no no bull junk on it. Like they really made it. A really good sneaker Like it looked like The 1990 Air Jordan 5s Or something like that You know what I'm saying Like yeah. you look at stuff Like that Like I'm still like that I'm still like that Like I like how They making the sneakers now Like they getting them Close back to the original forms With some, with certain ones Simple Yeah like, yeah Just simplistic yeah, yeah yeah We're not changing too much man the, Well uh, correct me if I'm wrong But the soles that you're doing With the shoes that you're making Right now uh, Those are kind of similar To the Jordan ones Correct Yeah like, guess what They not know They really uh, They simple They similar to them But it's a Nike SB Like so No yes, way bro Yeah so that's a dunk sole bro uh, It's crazy <laughs> <laughs> Bro you're a legend yeah, bro. bro I'll tell you It's a dunk sole bro So it's just different different bro like so many different aspects of the sneaker for real bro like man when they drop man y'all so they comfy too man man yes bro like when you, man when they drop man it's gonna be like man when you actually look at the shoe i'm like yeah man this 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 i would love to um i'd love to to get me a pair whenever they drop bro man, and just they coming man test, test them out so I, I'll, coming, be, I'll be on the lookout for sure is there any specific colorways that you're looking to do with them oh uh, yes man yes the, uh, i can't tell you this like the first one's gonna be like that that uh pine green cream and white Ooh. yeah Ooh, yeah, man, it's gonna be that's dope. That's fire. Man. It's I like be that. Dope, man, it's gonna be Would you dope. ever do a, a Jaguars? Uh, yes, man. Was, you already know they are. Yes, bro. I'm just saying, yes. man. Because that teal. Jaguars, come on, man. That teal would look fire man, on there, what? bro. Yeah. What? Man, do you like said, some gold laces or something, man? man You're crazy with it. Man, uh, I wore it to the Hornets game, man, and people were just stopping me, bro. Like, man, I'm walking. Like walking on, cause I had walked down to the court. I think I got a picture of it on my Instagram when yeah. I was on the Hornets court, man. And like, man, I'm walking off, man. And people's like, man, what the heck? Like, what was shoes and mills, man? Like, they catch your eyes, though. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, cause they, and they just catch your eyes, man. It's a beautiful sneaker, man. It's a beautiful they are, sneaker. bro. Um, it's a beautiful uh, sneaker, I, I, I want to know, like, what, um, you know, Whenever you're creating a sneaker, it's obviously such a touchy, like, it's a touchy area. You know what I mean? Mm. If you create something that's, a, if you create a shitty sneaker, mm. everyone's going to remember you for that shitty sneaker forever. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like one of those things for me. There's been shoes that I've bought in the past. I'm like, this is the coolest looking shoe ever, you know? And you put it on, and after like four or five days, you're like, bro, my feet are swelling. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, you know, I, I don't even feel, I don't even want to walk in these to go out for a fucking an hour <laughs> yeah. of dinner. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, you know, what were some of the, what, what were some of the points that you wanted to make sure that you went above and beyond with when creating this shoe? Uh comfortable like the comfortability, like like the the um the cushioning, like all of that kind of stuff play a part. Yeah. That yeah. in soul. Yes, man. Yeah. Yes. Yes, bro. And, and so your feet ain't sliding and sliding around in them and doing Have you yeah. have, do you play sports or anything? I played basketball. I haven't oh, played word. in a minute though, man. Have you played in these stickers? Uh no, I haven't played in them. I haven't played on a That'd be like the ultimate test, I man, feel like. I got a friend who's playing in Europe right now, man. So, man, we're going to try to, hey, man, they, we're gonna get them on the floor, man. Yo. Cool. Yeah, man. Yo. Yeah, man. Yo. Would you ever sponsor athletes with the brand? Man, would I? Yo. Yo, man. I mean, I feel like I that's that. like, I, t- I was telling you a little bit about the the guy I sponsor, and um, and it's helped my brand so much with like, I mean, it, you know, before we before we stepped away from it, like it was really pushing it heavy, you know, yeah. um, and uh, and and he's still he's still pushing the pod and doing all kinds of stuff. It's like so it's so cool to sponsor an athlete and you're kind of like growing with them in a sense, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And you guys just push each other. It's fine, cool. man. Hey, with yo, you, man, dude, that's, I, I that's can, crazy. I can only imagine the line of people that would want to be sponsored by you, man. Yeah, whenever yeah. you that's roll, that man, I mean, I'm with it. I'm with it, man. I want to talk about, um, uh, unless you had anything on, on the sneakers, I didn't want to step away yeah. too quick, but, um, I wanted to talk about the all over print Jaguars tee you did, bro. So you didn't just do it with the Jags. You did it with multiple other teams, but tell me specifically about like that print in general. How'd you come up with the idea? And you said it's screen printed yes right? bro yes it's like crazy. it's really 90s all over print like man the quality is crazy anybody you see rocking it they like man they'll tell you like the quality is crazy man like the heaviness of the t everything all of that play a role man but yeah um i wanted to start a collection man like i wanted a collection of them so i started out or uh, like say um my first one was um fam you Oh, bet. Yeah, yeah. i seen that one, too. Yeah. That Rattlers one goes yeah. crazy. Yes, man. Yes, Did you go to FAMU or anything? Uh, no, I had family. A lot of family that went to FAMU, yeah, including my mom. Almost yeah. everyone in Jacksonville went to fucking yes, FAMU, bro, man, yes. which I love it. I mean, FAMU is a great college, and, yes. and it's cool that it's right next to FSU, so it's like, yes. you know, you get all the love from both places. If you go to Tallahassee, man, it is a 
double college city, man. It's my second home, man. I yeah, love it. I love it. Tallahassee, man. So uh, you definitely got an FSU one on the way. Yep, yep. Uh, what's another one? Is there any is there any kind of um, fear with creating these kind of shirts? Because you're really, I mean, it's two things on this. So, um, and forgive me if I go off track a little bit, but when you're creating something that's already like an established thing, like a team or whatever, is there ever kind of a sense in like you getting lost maybe in like, you just don't want to be associated with like other people's shit kind of thing. You know what I mean? Because it's like when you create something, if I were to create something that's like a Jaguars related item, I wouldn't want people in Minnesota to see it and be like, Oh, that's a Jaguars brand. Like whatever. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, does that ever kind of scare you a little bit? It can. Yeah, it can. You don't want to put yourself in a box, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to be staying full. You want to spread it out. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Is that the goal? Yes. Definitely the goal, man. Definitely the goal. Word. What's, what's a team that um, you would consider, Making a shirt like what's what's kind of another team outside of the Jags outside of FSU that you would love to do a shirt for? Oh man, that's a good question, man. Um, because I know a couple that I would love to do is like colorway wise. Like, colorway, I think, man, Charlotte. Yeah, I was about to say yes, Charlotte. Bro, would be Charlotte, crazy. bro. Yes, bro. A Charlotte woman. I, lo- I always love that they colors, bro. Yeah, I always love they colors, man. Charlotte, I, yeah, definitely. Charlotte's a good one, bro. Um. You know, I'm obviously a big orange and blue f- or orange and black fan. Like the Bengals would be crazy. Ooh, like be if crazy. you did one like yeah. that, like that would be super sick. Yeah. I, you know, I would love to one day down the road get a little custom uh, all over OG hey, Sessions man, I, vintage. I, that man, would be crazy. Hey, man, dude, man, collab, man. Bro, That'd be a dope one. You already That'd know, man. You already one, know. Man. I'm up with the challenge, dude. And I and with just the creative flair that you add to things is so unique. Like, so do you do you draw everything on your own, or is do you have a person that kind of does most of your designs for you? All right, with clothes on, um, like I say, like with short sets and stuff like that, I actually draw them. Like I started start out from paper, I draw them from scratch, and then I can get them made. But uh, with the with the all over print, I would have an idea, but I have like a uh, shout out to my own graphic designer, man. He just on point, man. Like we work together, like like we like Shaq and Kobe. I love so it. whatever my idea is, man, he know how to bring it to life. I'm like, man, I need it like this, I need it like this, and man. He do his thing, you know what I'm saying? And then we make it come to life, you know what I'm saying? I love it. Yes, man, we make it come to life. But what's so special about all over print, man, is that you can't find, you can't just go nowhere and find nobody who can make all over print, bro. Like, it's a real, not an ancient process, but you got to find somebody who even got the the materials, bro, to even make yeah. an all over, like, especially screen print, I'm about bro. To say it's a huge screen. It's a huge That's screen, a good, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. So you got to find somebody that really know what they're doing, you know what I'm saying? So it's hard to even find people who can who can actually do it the right way. So, you know what I'm saying? And it's not a flat surface. Like, whenever you're doing the screen printing on, like, like if you were to do a normal screen printed shirt, just, like, on the front, it's typically a flat surface. So, it's, like, easy to get that really clear. Yeah. Like, it's, it, you know, it's, it's there's not a lot of uh, imperfections, like, or places where it's going to be touching the screen more than others. Yeah. And it's not going to be, like, spread out and shit. When you're doing an all over print tee, bro, you've got, like, the stitching, the different materials that it goes into. Yeah. You've got, like, the, the, the parts where it's, you know, folded over so it's two pieces yeah. of fabric. It's like, yeah. and that's going to be a, a higher raised point in the t-shirt. Yeah. And so, dude, the fact that you were even able to accomplish that is pretty impressive, bro. Yes, um, usually you see a lot of people, they'll do a, uh, I believe it's DTG version of the yeah, all over prints yeah. and but but the screen printing all over prints that's like like you said ancient bro yes, that's bro. like literally at 1989 it, bro like, man, yes bro it's like when you touch all over like all over print man the, the feel of it man like you can feel it i'm like man like that's the feel i like you know yours has the the like i mean it's a it's a heavyweight tee but it feels like when you're holding it in your hand it feels like this bitch is just out of the package from 1989 yes, like bro. you yes. feel like it's just been sitting in somebody's closet forever it feels Fact. like a thrifty piece bro <laughs> are you a big fan of obviously we're in the thrifted gear right now but are you a big fan of like vintage clothing where you man i was doing it man we, uh, i just had this talk with one of my homeboys man because we was into this stuff like before it got before it came back like you know what i'm saying like yeah. when baggy clothes was in like man we was already doing that kind of stuff so to see it come back man it's like boy it just came full circle like it's in now, like it's, it's back in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it make you happy too. Like, man, dang, that's dope to see it. See how how fashion just worked, man. Because fashion really just repeat itself. You know what I'm saying? Kind of evolved. You know what I'm saying? But it still repeat itself. Like you can see, like baggy pants coming back, like with certain styles. You know what I'm saying? Bell bottoms. Seeing girls wearing like certain bell bottoms. Like, man, what? <laughs> like you seeing seventy styles coming back now? Like you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's cool. It's cool, man. All the all the Jags gear with the um or vintage Jaguars gear with that original 95 logo on it is mm. like, that is my forte, bro. That is my, yeah. my go-to anything. I mean, I will buy anything. It doesn't matter if it is a pin. It doesn't matter if it's a pair of baby clothes. Like, yeah. If it's got that original 95 man, Jaguars that 95 logo on it, bro, Jaguar, man. that oh my shit God, is, with the stretch, man, 
Man, bro. I see why Jaguar Motor Company wanted it yeah, so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, I mean, that is like the, they took it quick. Oh, they took that big. They quick, took bro. it quick. Bro. But I mean, when you think about it, it's cool that they took it that quickly because now if you see anything with that logo on it, it's like it's damn, so real. It was like literally six months of them being able to yep. print that logo, bro, and like it, it was is, gone. Bro. You know, it is bro. And they actually made a lot in that six month span, bro. Like I'd be, I'd be surprised. Like even when I see certain stuff, I'm like, I never seen this Jaguar shirt. I never seen this Jaguar jacket. I'm like. Well, I wonder how much they was really producing in that time. Like, uh, you got to think like if they're because in my opinion, I think the they wouldn't have there wouldn't be that many if that was like their second or third logo because I think that what it was is the team that was the first ever logo that they used whenever we got the team. So they were trying to spread the word about this new team in Jacksonville yeah. to everyone. everybody. Yeah. And so it was more of like a marketing tactic to print as many mm-hmm. of these pieces of clothing as you can, mm-hmm. and also all these people like. If you're, if you're, I'm just going to use New Era as an example, or any of these brands that you want to get tapped into that Jacksonville market, yeah, you need to do a fucking Jaguars collab, or you yeah. need to print something with this new Jaguars logo on it to tap into that new market. I think that it was just like that time period, like, bro, everyone just said, I want a piece of this, yeah. and I want to get some of this coin yeah. and go in there and, and but, make some Jaguar shit. And it was so exciting, man. I still remember being in class, bro, like like the teacher, like, I remember, like, she was like, everybody listen up, like, man, we're going to have a football team. Like, I remember it was already, remember, it started with the rumors first, like, yep. I remember being young and, like, going to class, and they're like, man, we're going to have, like, it's going to go through, like, we're going to have an NFL team, like, I remember the excitement, like, uh, behind so cool. Yes, bro. I remember all of that, bro. I would do anything to be alive during that time, bro. Yes, like bro. that had, yes, to have been, bro. had to have been like the best news ever. Getting, yes, bro. Getting told, like elementary you know? school. Yes, bro. I remember, bro. Like that was like the big thing. I remember rumors was going around. Like as a kid, like damn, but we gonna have a like we gonna have an NFL team. You know? And then to see the Jaguars now with Trevor Lawrence. Man, I mean, man. even when we first had the team, bro, with the like players we had: Mark Brunel, Jimmy Smith, Keenan McCardo, oh, yeah. like bro, like Freddie was, T, bro. The, I, I would do anything to get that roster back, yes, bro. bro. Like those yes, guys will bro. always have a spot in my legends, heart. Legends, bro. Them legends, man. Yeah, yeah legends. Bro. That's that's somebody like that'd be like go. I, if I were to get somebody on the podcast, bro, like that'd be like close to my number one. Be yeah, like definitely got to get Fred Taylor. Bro. I was just gonna say, bro, you definitely got to get Fred Taylor on here, bro. Bro, you that shit would Fred be Taylor insane. Him, and just looking at the stuff like he stayed so relevant even after getting off the Jags yes, and all bro. that stuff. So yes, bro, real legend, man. He real really legend. is for sure. Um, I want to do a new segment with you guys. This is the uh, the first time that we're gonna start implementing this segment to the podcast. Um, it's called win of the week. All right. So we each, it's going to give us an opportunity for us each to shout out somebody that's either done something good this week or, um, just, you know, blown your mind. Every single day I see new things happening where it's like people are doing dope shit. And I always want to shout them out in the pod, but there's never really like an opportunity for me to just randomly bring up something. Um, but you know, I wanted to implement this segment and start doing it now for every episode. So this will be the first time we do it. Um, so, yeah, time for uh, win of the week with the boys from the OG Sessions podcast. Sure. My win of the week, um, I'll go ahead and start this off, is uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. I'm surprised you said that right. Giannis Antetokounmpo. I'm pretty sure I've been practicing that. Did you so, say it right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, did I? You did, did your I? work with that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did your work with that one. Well, well, I see, I'm looking. I'm like, hold on. I'm like, <laughs> bro, I, I've been yeah, working man. on that shit. I'll tell you what, man. And, um, he was standing in front of the mirror before this. <laughs> like, <laughs> Antetokounmpo. Antetok. Like, literally, bro. And and so, um, I don't even know where he's from. I think he's Greek or some shit. But um, this week I played, uh, or not this week, this season I played fantasy basketball. Um. Never, I've the only basketball game I've ever watched, NBA, college, anything. Like, the only basketball, basketball game I've actually watched was Kobe's last game. I was a big Kobe Bryant fan. And I'd see clips of, like, basketball games and stuff like that. And I've always been a fan of, like, certain teams and stuff. But I've never actually, like, been like, oh, yeah, let's fucking go. This is, like, you know, I really mm-hmm. want to watch this game type shit, whatever. Um, but I got into this fantasy basketball league. They needed one person. It was just kind of like, oh, we'll just sweep you in on here. Like, I, they thought it was going to be an easy dub type shit. Well, I just won. <laughs> yeah, twenty five dollar entry, and I won like three hundred bucks or something. Whoa, yeah, like two hundred and eighty bucks, and it's all because of Giannis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> Man, I didn't pick up anybody all season. I went thirteen and five, and won. I was bro, I, like in my like I I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't know like who any of the people were. I'm like, oh, I did Tyler Hero. Jack Harlow made a song about him. He's got to yeah. be good. I was like, I got I picked him up like early. You know what I'm saying? But like, Man, that's crazy, guys, bro. I fucking won. <laughs> and all these guys are like dead at like huge basketball fans. Yeah. And so my win of the week is Giannis Antetokounmpo. 
You saved me. <laughs> Hands up for Giannis. <laughs> I'd love to get you on the pod, my brother. <laughs> oh, man. No, honestly, I should just Venmo Giannis at 280 real quick. Man. Bro, I, 25, man. Quadruple flip. And, hey, man, if any of y'all want to play fantasy basketball next year, man, I'm feeling confident. Hey, so man, let's go ahead. Need, hey, man, you need to put me on. We need an OG <laughs> Sessions fantasy basketball episode, hey, man. man. Hey, for real. Hey. Do you play any fantasy sports or anything? I don't, man. I got a lot of friends that do it, but I, I jump on basketball. Now. Yeah, you need to get yeah, on that yeah, shit, bro. Yeah, I jump on it. It was pretty fun, even though I didn't know what I was doing, bro. It was fun in the end, shit. Of course, you won. Yeah, you won. Yeah, bro, I was yeah. loving that it's shit. It's always bro. fun when you're ready. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure my team auto picked like in the beginning, bro, like for the first couple picks. So the fact that it's got Giannis was like just random, bro. And yeah. I was like, this boy kind of raw. He, man. he went up 100 points a game and shit. I'm like, I see people play with him in 2K. I'm like, this boy must be pretty sweet <laughs> with it, man. He's putting up numbers. For sure. So, um, yeah, man, that's my win of the week. Uh, Joey? My win of the week. You guys know I'm a family man. So I'm going to shout out my uncle. Ooh, okay. Uncle Michael. He actually just got promoted to Master Chief in the Navy. So. Man, that's dope. Yeah. What? Yeah, Wait, Master dope, Chief? Ma- he's the Chief of all the Masters. Or Master wow. of oh, all so the Chiefs. Oh, so he's the Master of all the Chiefs. Right. Damn. That's dope. I think it's like Wait, E9 so in his, is his rank. That's Maybe really that's cool. Dope. What's his job in the military, do you know? Like, or in the Navy? Master Chief. Well, I mean, that's his title, I'm sure. But, like, do you know what he does? He, like, like shoot people? No, I know he's, he, he was a minesman at one point overseas. Okay, um, cool. But he got sent back with a Purple Heart, so that boy got hurt. But Wow. I mean, no, he's, like, it's crazy. Honestly, I look up to that man because he's gotten, he's actually gotten two Purple Hearts. And then after one of them, it was, like, two weeks, three weeks after we were playing golf on the golf course. Oh, my God. So, wow. Yeah. So, uh, that's dope, bro. Yeah, he had, like, just gotten shrapnel pulled out of his back, and we're playing golf. It's like. Okay, this guy's dude. I'm telling you, the Master Chief build different. Mm-hmm. That boy, yeah. it, and he's what was young the video too. game where they use Master Chief? Was that Halo? Halo. I don't even, I don't even play Halo, but there's I've been a about it. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> that boy, that boy, I Halo play, for real. That boy, real life Halo. He's, he is shit. the Master Chief. <laughs> I played that in so long, bro. There was hey, this kid in school. That's the only way I know. This kid, his name is Dakota. It's funny. He would like he would bring like the Halo swords to school. Oh <laughs> man, he was, man. Of, he was a cool kid though. I love yeah. it. Carlos, win of the week, man. Man, a win of the week, man. I'm gonna go with Nod Ross, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the comedian. Yeah, man, who put man. you in there with Lil Duval. Yeah, yeah, but man, it's funny though, man, because this week, man, it was funny because Lil Duval posted. Uh, they had like a little. He he made a post with him, and they was uh laughing about a dude came up to Nod like crying tears in his eyes, like man, man, I'm happy you made it, man. Like I'm happy, but, like bro, you big. Like it's hard to make out. It's really hard to make it out of Duval for, for sure, real. bro. So, like man, me just seeing that, like man, that's that, that's kind of like. Let you know you kind of man you on you on the right track man yeah. you on the right track he just so man so down to earth man just a cool dude for real you know what I'm saying down to earth for real man so man we just happy like, I would be happy to see people make it for real man like especially out of the city for real so he one yeah. of them like he one of them for dude, real dude that's that's awesome and I we just had a comedian on the podcast a couple episodes ago and, yeah. and I love comedy bro it's like and and you realize once you start getting into comedy and watching it a lot the uh, how difficult it is to bro. be funny it's a real craft bro like yeah. that's a real skill you gotta I feel work like the it's, crowd it, me personally I feel like it's easier to be funny whenever no one's expecting something funny mm. to happen so like if we were all just sitting here doing a normal podcast like how we've been doing and I said something funny we'd all die laughing because yeah. we're not expecting it but when you go to a comedy show and you're like actually expecting someone to be funny i feel like it's got to be a hundred times harder to pressure. make me laugh i mean me, pressure, man. exactly bro that's so I, I know i could never do it that's for sure yeah. and he funny man he yeah did funny, hell yeah man. he did funny if yeah, he's so. making it up there bro you said what's his name again uh not ross not yeah, ross yeah, yeah. dude okay yeah, so dude yeah. i mean shit bro i'd love to get him on the pod eventually like yeah, there's so yeah. anyone that's making it out of the city man especially yeah, you know man. obviously you seem like such a great guy with a great head on your shoulders like yeah. people who you're, you fuck with yes, or associated bro. with you i can only imagine how cool they are so. Yes, bro. Yes, bro. So shout out to him, man. Shout out to good him. Good shit. That's man. a good win of the week, boys. That's yeah, a great way is. to start this I like that off. segment. Yeah, I'm good. loving this, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. We, you got to keep this running. Hill, we got to keep this running keep for this sure, running. man. Yeah, you got to keep that running. I love it, bro. I love it. Um, Anything anything else you want to shout out, man, before we get this ra- episode wrapped up? Dude, I've enjoyed this conversation so much. Oh, yeah. Uh, Shout out to all the friend, friends and family, Uh, beautiful kids, my uh, junior man. Oh, your dad? Uh, Carly, that's my son. Oh, word. Okay, yeah, bad, yeah, bad. Yeah, all my family, man. Yeah. Good friends, for you, bro. Yeah. What's, um, Shout what's, out to Jacksonville, man. Shout for sure. I, what's a what's a uh, word of, or word of advice you want to put out for all the dads out there, man? Oh, man. Like, that's like number one, bro. Like, that, like that's my life for real, bro. Like, uh, being a father, man. You know what I'm saying? So, man, all the dads, keep pushing, man. Keep pushing, man, because it's hard for us. <laughs> Father's Day's right around the corner. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But, man, all the dads keep, man, just staying the kids' lives, man. Keep staying yeah. their life, man. They need us, man. Just like they need their mothers, man. They need their fathers, man. Hell so yeah, bro. 100%. Big piece of it, you know what I'm saying? It says bit a lot piece. about, like, dude, like, now, I always knew how cool of a brand you had. I already knew, you know, 
how dope all the dope things you're doing with the brand and stuff. But now just learning your story, knowing you got a full time job, knowing that you're a dad of you got multiple kids, like bro, it just shows the show like, dude, you are next fucking level. You're just built different, bro. Yeah, and bro. and some people are just they just are, you know. It's not like you can you can't teach it. You can't really yeah. like you can't just become this person that's just yeah, like man. like you know, built built like you can just take on anything. And um dude, you're a fucking legend, bro. Yeah, it's man. it's it's a pleasure to have you on the OG Sessions man, pod. Oh bro. yeah, one more thing, man. I just appreciate anybody that ever helped me, man. That ever, man, that ever brought a piece of man. If you ever liked something, man, you ever shared anything on social media, man. I appreciate everybody and everything, man. And um, just keep God first. You know what I'm saying? I keep God first over everything, man. Over everything. You know Hell yeah, man? bro. And everything gonna work out, man. God's definitely guiding you in the right path, for man. Sure, That's I appreciate for that, sure. man. Believe in yourself, man. Believe in yourself. Anything else, Joe? You got anything else, brother? I want you to. Hold them shorts up again. Let them see them shorts. That's yeah, it. give give us one more view of the shorts. Do you sell though. those? Are you? Oh you, yeah, these coming next, man. Different colorways in the Bangum collection. Okay. I love that. Do you yeah. sell the shoes you got on? Oh uh, yeah, they're coming, man. Yeah, they're coming okay. on the way. Yeah, the first per- colorway about to drop, man. Okay. What do you? It, but before we get up, wrapped up, what's um? What would you say when it comes to the shoes and and dropping those and everything like that? Like, is there um? Is there a certain a certain process you're going to go through with marketing those differently than any other stuff yes 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 because it's not like clothes man for like, sure yeah they're not like clothes so i'm coming a whole another way with these shoes man. yeah yeah but i'm definitely want to bring the pop-up back man the first pop-up that i had was so successful man and then we sold out where was that yeah. at it was on the east side man yeah it was right on Florida avenue oh man. i remember i seen that that was um yeah where was that at what was the location that was a little low-key spot um, um it was at, Ave- uh, at, Ave- at cookie shop yeah it was at cookie shop on florida avenue man Good shit, bro. not far from the stadium no yeah saying? yeah right in my neighborhood so we man we sold out man so man That's everybody good. keep asking me about a second pop-up so Man, the second pop up finna be dope, man. Y'all make sure you send us those, that oh, yeah. address. Yeah, man. definitely, know, definitely, definitely. Pull out, definitely, man. Because I think that, I think that's a good way to bring the sneakers out. Hundred yeah, percent. And I love that you're staying true to your roots too, bro. You're yeah. you're very um you're very authentic, bro. And just like the way that you you don't you carry yourself, but you you put your you put the city on your back a little yeah. bit. You know what I mean? And you're so confident with everything you do, but you're also like very confident that like. I'm Duval all the fucking way, you know, yeah. and I love that, bro. Just the same way that we're over here crediting all these artists that keep putting on for the city and keep, you know, making Duval what it is, bro. It's like you're doing the same shit. Sure, and um, I try to do the same thing with my podcast as well. I'll never, I'll never deny my city. You know what I'm saying? For like, sure, man. at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm Duval. I'm Duval in my blood, man. I'm teal, sure. teal blooded for sure. Gotta be, man. I love gotta it, bro. Be, so, hey, man. And, um, you know, when the Jaguar season comes around, I would love to, Love to do some kind of work, man. Maybe we can at least, you know, do like a little little watch party or something for the Jags. Man, definitely, a, man. Do a watch party slash pop up slash live pod. Some sure. shit, bro. Oh man, we got I a lot like, of work to do. Yeah, man. we got some shit to make <laughs> we got it, bro. A lot of work so, to do, um, man. OG, stay tuned, man. Um, let's tap these people in. Where can they buy your shit? Uh, they can go on eighty nine losoriginals dot com. I usually got my link in my own. If you go, if you check out my Instagram, is eighty nine underscore los underscore originals. Yeah, so you can Bet. go on there. You'll see the link in there. Or you can go on Facebook, too. Carlos Foster, Facebook. Bet. Yeah, and my link be in there, too. So all you can hit me up in the DMs. I'm, I'm easy to talk to, man. You can hit me hit me up if you need something. If you got questions, uh, hit me up, man. You're a legend, bro. Yeah, For man. real. Appreciate it, man. Um, Appreciate uh, the love. Also, make sure. I, I don't do this enough, but make sure y'all follow the boy Joey Allen. Um, obviously, you know, he's been fucking killing it on these episodes, bro. You're you're starting to grow so much as a podcaster just over the fucking like four or five episodes you've been on. Your questions get so good, bro. So shout out to you, man. Y'all killing um, it, bro. I'm having fun. Thank you, bro. I love supporting it, bro. I love this, being a part this of something it. special, bro. Yeah, I love doing it with you, bro. It's so comfortable talking with, you know, someone that I've been friends with for like almost a decade or some right. shit, bro. It's like Makes I fucking love you, man. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, Joey's Plants on Instagram. Joey's Plants on TikTok. That boy's killing it. He's a um, not a botanist. He does not like being called that. He's a houseplant <laughs> enthusiast. Houseplant enthusiast. I this like motherfucker's plants. got every houseplant you could ever imagine, bro. What? And They're he crazy. coined the hashtag Tiny Jungle because he used to have a tiny house and it had like a million t- houseplants in it, bro. Like you walk in, you feel like you're walking into a jungle. Yeah. Bro. What? You got the Mr. Miyagi plant too? Yeah. Like, I got all the, the trees. Plants. Everything, bro. What? Everything. Oh, man. If you go, I don't know if you're on TikTok at all, but if you just do hashtag Tiny Jungle, it's, yeah. me. it's all Joey. What? It's cool, bro. Gotta we're gonna we're out. gonna check it out after we over we get out of this episode, out. man. So um shout out to all my OGs. I love you guys, man. If you guys are looking for more bonus content, if you're looking to watch these episodes, I know some of y'all are like itching to watch the episode like two, three days earlier, or you know, I got people in my DMs like, hey, just send me the link, bro. I know you got the link, all this shit. Bro, we dropped the videos on our Patreon two days early. So if you're a <laughs> Patreon member, you're all my Patreon members have already 
been watched the episode, seen everything, you know, two, three days before the rest of the world gets to see it. So um, shout out to all my certified OGs on there, man. Patreon only or uh, patreon.com forward slash OG sessions. Um, choose that membership that's right for you, man. And we're going to get that shit popping, bro. We drop tons of exclusive content on there. Um, we're even going to start doing some secret episodes on the Patreon. Um, Joey's, Joey knows a little bit about yeah. this. So we've got some secret <laughs> interviews lined up that um, we're not even going to share the name with you guys. You just got to be a Patreon member and watch the video and find out for yourself, man. So get on um, that. Get on that. Me and Joey already put a couple uh, bonus bonus episodes on there. It's pretty raw. Um, yeah, if you guys are wanting to follow the podcast, stay tapped in. Instagram, OG Sessions Pod. TikTok, OG Sessions. Twitter, OG Sessions Pod. Uh YouTube, obviously, OG Sessions, and uh, yeah. You got OnlyFans? Damn. I got, what else you, you got? You got OnlyFans. Y'all want, y'all want that bonus bonus content, boys. Jeez, Shit. you start listening. To them. Shit, that's a, that's a secret, secret episode right there, boy. Hey, if y'all want that if y'all want that, that bonus content leak, if y'all looking for that OnlyFans leak, right, hit that DM, baby. You know how it goes. Me and Nick just switch chairs. Hey, <laughs> I'm just hey man, he's taking it. a lift, man. Hey, man. <laughs> Oh, fuck, man. That's how you end the episode, man. All right, geez, man. I love you guys. We'll be back next week. Peace.